welcome back to the channel. We're here to talk today about why you keep stripping pinion gears and spur gears in your X-Max or your XRT. All right, first off, thank you to Kat, my wife, for doing the intro on this video. If you want to see more of her in the videos, we certainly can put her in uh, more. Now, obviously, owning a hobby shop, we see a lot of XRTs and X-Maxes come in and out from the repairs, and we know exactly why these things happen, what leads up to them, because it's not just one reason, it's not just because my truck was defective out of the box, or you know, I did one little jump and the whole thing exploded, okay? There's a lot of things that lead up to this, and we're gonna talk about exactly why these things happen and what you can do to prevent this from happening. We've got a brand new, clean, fresh XRT right here, and I'm going to show you what Traxxas did to help prevent you from stripping gears as you would get it right off the showroom floor. Everything's completely stock. Nothing at all has been changed. This may blow your mind. I haven't seen anybody talk about the thing that Traxxas did on this gear cover. The gear cover is magic. Literally, there is magic inside this gear cover. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna show you right now. The first thing everybody does is take the gear cover off, put it over here where nobody cares about it, and just look at the gears. When the gear cover literally can tell you a lot of the story as to what happened, what do you see? There's a bearing in here. This bearing is designed to rest against the outer edge here of the pinion gear to prevent it from backing out. Majority of the time when I see these gears stripped out, the bearing inside of here is completely cooked. And I'm gonna throw in a little clip of literally an XRT that was just here that the customer stated, my gears keep stripping out, and the first thing I did was look inside the gear cover. We're just gonna keep on laying the magic in here, all right? Let's just keep on going, check this out. I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but stock, out of the box, on the motor shaft, there is a spacer. This spacer does two things. The first thing it does is help take away the guesswork of where to position your pinion gear so that way it's in line with the spur gear. The other thing it does is it keeps the gear in the perfect position to rest against this bearing. If you remove that sleeve and put, say, an aftermarket pinion gear on, no problem with that, but you're going to have to guess as to whether or not this bearing is in the right position, and a lot of the times it's not. And when you put this gear cover back on, it's either going to be pushing on this bearing and this is not going to be seated correctly and it's gonna be on an angle or it's too far in and the bearing's no longer doing its job. Even the die hard XRT X-Max guys that are like, Chris, I knew about the gear cover, I knew about the sleeve. Don't worry, I got you, okay? Another reason why I see these strip out sometimes. Motor mount screws are loose or motor mount screws holding the motor to the chassis. After you run the vehicle a few times, it doesn't really matter what vehicle you have, what brand it is. If you read the instruction manual, it's very easy to know that any vehicle requires maintenance and you should be checking the bolts on your truck to make sure that nothing's getting loose. And one of the most common areas, because this truck has so much torque, it's got a lot of braking power, a lot of low-end torque, it can make some of the screws loosen up after the first couple of runs. When the truck is brand new and you run it for the first time, sometimes they can get a little bit loose because plastic compresses a little bit. Same thing with the wheels. I'm not gonna get too in detail with the rest of the parts on the truck, but if you put brand new tires and brand new wheels on your truck, after the first run, a lot of times they get loose and you need to retighten them just that one extra time because when you install them, it compresses the plastic slightly, you run the vehicle, and then they loosen up. So you just need to tighten them one last time just to make sure that they remain snug. And the same goes for these motor bolts. A lot of times I'll find that these motors, I'll feel them, and then there's play in the motor, which is allowing these gears to get out of mesh and strip out. There are also two Screws, bolts, I'm going to use these words interchangeably. If you want to uh, write me an email about it, you feel free to. Um, I'm just going to continue. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Screws, bolts, whatever. Anyways, there are two of them that actually hold the physical motor to the motor mounts. And even more commonly than the four 
holding the motor to the chassis. The two that are holding the motor to the actual motor mount, if you can see inside here, um, they are actually sunken head uh, bolts inside there that thread into the actual motor to hold the motor to the motor mount. Those will sometimes get a little bit loose and the same thing will happen. There'll be a little bit of play and that will allow them to get out of mesh and strip out. I recommend if you don't want to have to monitor uh, the four motor mount screws, on my XRT, Traxxas makes an amazing OEM upgrade that helps prevent exactly what I was talking about, which is this is the motor mount washer set and it includes slightly longer bolts in order to accommodate for the washers here. And what this does is exactly like I was talking about, if you try to tighten these and over tighten them, it will just compress the plastic. This allows them uh, to prevent the chassis from getting damaged if you want to tighten them more to prevent them from getting loose. The pinion gear is held onto the motor shaft with a grub screw. Now, this vehicle does come with its own tool set, but they're very basic. I recommend getting a higher end tool set, Traxxas sells them, there's other aftermarket brands that sell them, where you can actually tighten the grub screw a little bit tighter than you would be with a regular little tiny Allen key that you can't really get any torque on. Sometimes what will happen is this grub screw will get slightly loose after the first run, it gets some heat in it, and the pinion gear will get loose on the motor shaft. Even if it does back out, like we talked about, that bearing is there to save the day, so that way it doesn't strip everything out in the process. If you don't strip the gears right away, but you strip them one time, and then all of a sudden they keep on stripping, there's a reason for it. The number one reason is because you didn't clean your metal shards. And there's a cover right here that needs to be removed when you strip these gears in order to get all the metal teeth out, out of this area here. If you don't do that, they will just strip again. The first thing I do is grab a magnet and get all of the metal shards out of this area because if there's one single metal shard that's left inside this area and you install everything again, it will strip again because the metal will get in between these gears and you won't have a good time. In order to replace the spur gear, you have to remove these four screws right here to remove this cover, which covers the actual transmission input shaft assembly here. When you remove that, you'll be able to remove the spur gear, replace it, and reinstall it. The two screws that are on the inner side are a lot longer than they are on the outer side, so the first thing you need to make sure is that the screws are going in the right spot, but more importantly, these two front-facing ones you want to be very careful not to over tighten these two right here because these are threaded into plastic into the rear bulkhead. And if you strip the plastic that these are being threaded into, this cover will no longer do its job as far as holding the input shaft in place and you will get play in the input shaft with the bearings here because it's not compressing it properly and you'll have a very bad time because you'll need to replace your rear bulkhead. Trust me how I know. This last point I'm going to talk about is the tires. The XRT comes with different tires than the X-Max and the number one first thing that a lot of people do on their vehicle just to make it their own is they put a different set of wheels on it. That's great. One thing you want to keep in mind though is how heavy they are. Belted tires get installed on the vehicle which can be up to twice as heavy as the stock tires and it puts a lot more strain on the drivetrain. And when you're doing a lot of jumps, that can certainly put more load on these gears. And I'm going to talk about this in a second, but if you do want to put different parts on your XRT, if it is no longer going to be stock, you can certainly go with hardened steel gears. In stock form though, the gears that come on it are adequate. And this is something that a lot of people have a hard time understanding is in stock form, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this vehicle as far as being able to handle everything durability wise, so long you're keeping it stock. Once you make this vehicle not stock anymore, different tires, different gearing, it's no longer the same reliability as it was out of the box. So you just need to keep that in mind whenever you are modifying anything. So that goes for any vehicle at all. My final point on why you keep stripping gears is the driver. This can have a lot to do with whether or not the gears strip out. A lot of times, people that get the XRT or an X-Max may not have the experience that some other drivers might have with how to drive it. 
how to jump it, how to land it, and that can lead to certain things breaking sooner than they would if the driver is more experienced. Myself, I've been doing RC for 18 years, and for that reason, I know when I'm landing with a vehicle after doing a double backflip, I don't have the throttle pinned as soon as it lands. If this truck is jumping in the air and you're landing it while still pinned full throttle, the, it's an insane amount of force going straight to these gears right here, and a lot of times that will strip them out. I get people telling me that they've had other vehicles that don't strip as often um, as you know maybe this vehicle or other vehicles. I'm telling you right now, I've been uh, working on RC cars in a hobby store for over 10 years. I've worked on probably thousands of X-Maxes, uh, dozens of XRTs, and I'm telling you right now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the design from Traxxas. It's a really, really great design. In my opinion, it's one of the best designs as far as the transmission setup. It's extremely efficient, and there are other brand vehicles that will strip the gears just as much, if not more, than this vehicle does. And I promise you that. I get plenty of other 1.6 scale, one fifth scale vehicles where other things break under way less stress than these ones do. So don't think for a second that there's any reason not to get this vehicle just because uh, there's a lot of things that lead up to these things happening that you need to keep in mind, especially if you're not experienced. And that's, that's, these are all the points we're talking about. It's a very high performance truck. Therefore, you need to do a little bit more than you might need to do on your brushed rust or two wheel drive. So for that reason, you need to make sure that things are tight just because there's so much power going through these vehicles. It's completely normal just to do regular maintenance. There's been a lot of information in this video. To summarize, if you have a stock XRT, these are the key things you should look at. The motor mount screws, make sure they're tight when you first get it. Also, after each run, I recommend checking them. The screws that hold the motor to the motor mount, make sure those are tight. Get yourself a nice tool set and make sure the grub screw stays tight on the pinion gear. Then make sure the bearing inside your gear cover is not melted. Also make sure that everything is in line here, that the sleeve is installed and everything is set properly on your gear mesh. Driving style. One thing that can really help if you don't want to worry about not hitting the brakes too hard or how you drive the vehicle, because technically you should be able to drive it however you want to. Obviously, some driving styles are going to be harder on the truck than others are. So if you have the Bluetooth module, get the Bluetooth module, put it in your radio, and you can adjust braking power, throttle sensitivity. Braking power is probably one of the number one things that is super hard on these gears. When you come off a jump, land, or doing a high speed run and hitting those brakes, it's set at 100% default settings. So tone it down a little bit. That would definitely help if you're really hard on your brakes a lot, keep your gears from exploding. If you're modifying your truck, that includes putting just a simple different set of wheels on it because this truck is designed to run with the wheels that are on it. First thing I would suggest is getting the motor mount washers for the motor mount screw so that way you can keep the motor mount a little bit tighter and keep it from moving anywhere. If you do strip the gears once already, you need to make sure you clean all the metal shards with a magnet out of this area. And when you reinstall the input shaft here, the two most important screws are these ones on the front facing side. They're threaded into the rear bulkhead and if you over tighten them and strip them out, you will continually strip those gears if you don't address that. If you do end up stripping them out, just get a new rear bulkhead. Um, they're like, I think they're 16 bucks, maybe around $20 or so for a new rear bulkhead. Obviously it takes a little bit of work just to install it. Do not use one of these in order to reinstall these screws into the chassis because you will end up stripping out the plastic. You wanna do it by hand. You wanna feel it. So obviously this is a great tool for taking things out and putting them three quarters of the way back in. But when you're finishing it off, use a handset of, you know, use a hand tool that way you can really feel when you get that resistance, you know, snug it up, just snug. You don't have to go crazy. Hardened steel gears. If you've got an upgraded motor system, obviously in my XRT, I've got a giant motor in it. And of course I've got the hardened steel gears, but these, this is literally the Traxxas spur gear that's on here. And this thing literally has 
just an absurd amount of power. And guess what? I don't strip gears on it. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If there's anything you want to add, definitely let me know. And thank you for watching today's video. I will see you in the next one.